And we are live. Hi, Alan. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Good. I am so excited to be here with you today talking about call centers. We've been working on this event for how many weeks? A couple weeks now. Okay, so I finally get everything that the call centers are about. I would like to create my own at this point, and so I'm excited for everyone else to get into it and to understand what you got going on at Grand Source. Phenomenal. No, no, we're, we're, we're excited. And um, today, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's Global Humanitarian Day. Today, December, yeah, December 10th. Y'all can Google it. So I have to start off this presentation by uh, giving gratitude and, and saying thank you, not only to the people that are on this webcast, but for Resilia and your continued partnership, because a, a cause center and the concept and the implementation would not be possible without you helping us with the back end work. So thank you. Oh, we love that. Thank you, Alan. Absolutely. Savitra said, hi, Alan, looking great, guys. I told Alan, I'm like, the painting, the suit, I'm like, I gotta step up my game. <laughs> I told everybody I have to at least uh, put uh, extra clothes on to make me look like I actually know <laughs> what I'm doing, right? <laughs> Alan knows more than what he's doing. And also, guys, where are you tuning in from? I know that Alan and his team um, has been promoting this event, and the Resilia team has been doing the same. So I know that we have people from all over. So drop in the chat um, where you're tuning in from. I see somebody, Annie. Hi, Annie, is tuning in from Chicago. A lot of Chicago people. New Are York is in the house. Alan, isn't that your hometown, New York? Uh, so my family is from, my mom's side is from New York, and my dad's side is from uh, New Orleans. Okay. And you know we're based out of New Orleans. New Orleans, yeah. That's where I met y'all the first time. I think I met Julie or another young lady. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm hoping to get back. I'm, 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 I'm excited to get some of my mom's gumbo for the holiday season. <laughs> could use some right now. Exactly. Awesome. Well, I want to respect everyone's time. We are two minutes in, so hi everyone. My name is Alasia Brown and I am the community manager here at Resilia. I am so excited to welcome you to Resilia Office Hours, um, a live chat with nonprofit and operational leaders sharing actionable advice on how to increase your impact. Today we are hanging out with founder and CEO at Grant Source, Alan Thornton. How are you, Alan? I know we talked about it a little bit, but how are you as we're wrapping up this year? I know you have a big philosophy on not taking your foot off of the gas at yeah. the year. So what's been up with you? Nothing much. Just hustling and uh, just living the COVID dream, right? It is what you make it. So I know, and it has been a tragedy that has happened in, in our country, but at the end of the day, we still have to turn these obstacles into opportunities, right? We can't let a good pandemic go to waste. We still have to move forward. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited to connect with our audience about the work that Grant Source and Resilia partners on. Um, I'm also ready to hear more about the cost center model and look forward to learning about how cost centers can benefit those who work in the nonprofit, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and social responsibility space. So at first, I did not know that cost centers um, worked with like the social responsibility sector, but the more digging that I did, the more I was like, oh, this is like a no brainer um, that cost centers and the DEI and social responsibility space go hand in hand. Yeah, so they, they go hand in hand in, in a few different ways and we'll, we'll dig down into what a cost center is, what the framework is, and by the time everybody leaves here, they will have a good understanding of not only what it is, how it'll benefit their, their actual respective businesses, and then next steps if they want to implement or move forward. Um, we have a lot of D diversity and inclusion officers on here uh, from all over the country, and I know social impact is, is huge. So we're gonna talk about building minority programs within a cause center, and you'll know how that's gonna impact your bottom line so you can implement this program with the dollars you're already gonna lose for taxes. Yeah, yeah. So let's learn more about you before we jump into the model. Can you tell us more about your professional background and what led you to founding Grant Source? Absolutely. So, and, and you tell me, I, I can show you pictures, I can go a cappella. It's your world, I'm just living in it. You can go a cappella for now, but we okay. might do some pictures later on. <laughs> okay, excellent. So, just a little bit about me. So, I, I grew up, so 
I have family all over and you may see that the my voice is a little different. Some people say I may sound, it's like New York, New Orleans and Island, like all mixed it together. <laughs> yeah, so my, my family is uh, military, so we moved around and I actually grew up and spent most of where I graduated high school is in, uh, in West Texas, in Fort Bliss. Some of you may know of Fort Bliss, better known as El Paso. It's a border town, and there was a big shooting there last year, which, you know, huge global news. But in growing up in El Paso, um, I was growing up, I was a hustler, right? I, I sold everything, lotions, potions, hope, soap, you name it. I sold it and CDs back in, in the day, and it was all legal, right? And I had some friends that were selling things that weren't so legal. But what I learned at a young age is you are a product of the environment that's in front of you. And unfortunately, and I, and I won't go too far on a tangent about this, but I know we have a lot of diversity and inclusion officers on here. So this story is gonna be, is gonna resonate with you. Um, so the National Principal Association says that 85% of students will live at or above the expectations that is set for them. So when I grew up, I was told, right, by young teachers, the educators, you'll be lucky if you make it to 21 because most of you, by the time you turn 18, will be dead or in jail. Mm -hmm. And when I looked up and when I turned 18, most of my friends were dead or in jail, right? But I wanted to get out of that environment, so I left and I, and I went to school. I, uh, I played ball for a year and then I ended up in San Antonio, Texas is where I landed. I sold, um, I sold insurance and I bartended all throughout college. And that's how I got put myself through school. After that, I went through and just knowing, going back to my environment, when I was in school, I started a nonprofit. And where I grew up and when I went to school, the African-American graduation population in a five-year period for male was less than 6%. So we said that's unacceptable and we started a nonprofit and all this is relevant to the story in the background. We started that nonprofit and now fast forward to today, that nonprofit Men of Honor has 80 chapters worldwide, US, Canada, Mexico, UK. But what we did is we did campus, we did community involvement, we got a lot of notoriety, a lot of press, but when we graduated, and why I did that? Because I wanted to get some of those young kids a different environment and help the guys that were in school, right, have somebody look up to, and that increased their own graduation rate. So it was like good on both sides. And when I graduated, we didn't have a lot of money for our nonprofit. So we looked for this thing called grants. Yeah. And unfortunately, they were extremely hard to find, even more difficult to write. So I ended up just paying somebody to help us. And this is after I graduated from college, I went into software sales but i ended up getting burned and they stole my money so i said look there's got to be a better way to do this again in a place where something needed to change yeah and being a millennial i said look there's got to be a technology platform to streamline this process there wasn't so again if it's not there we created it and all through that time it took a couple years to build a platform now during the same time in my uh, personal career I had sold for some of the largest technology company in the, in the world. Um, EMC, I sold ERP software. Uh, actually, the CEO of Calumby, we sold at EMC the same time. Topa, he's a Nigerian, yeah. yeah, he was in Atlanta. So we sold at EMC, that was back in 2013, at around the same time, and he ended up, and he's doing great, right? Things in his business. Sold for them, sold for a couple startups, and then really started to gain traction in our own business and started to grow we launched in 2018, Grant Source, right? Finally, after application development is a whole nother world, but we finally launched our technology platform. And within the last few years, we've helped people find and secure over $10 million just at the beginning of COVID. The exciting thing is with all the new money coming down, and we'll talk about this in the cost centers, um, we'll probably triple what we did in the first few years um, in getting, helping people get money for their mission. And we'll even talk about this next administration and the $870 billion plan for minorities that'll help even catapult that and for people as well. And the cost center is a big part of that. Yeah. Well, the main thing that I'm sure, besides your amazing story that stood out um, just now when you were speaking that you said is money for your mission. Yeah. I know that nonprofit leaders, DEI leaders, social responsibility leaders, 
hear those what three words and they're like, ooh, I, that, that sounds like something that I need. Um, and like I said, I've been saying the word call center a lot, but we haven't defined it yet. Um, so can you define what is a call center even? Yeah, so a call center, just like and many of people are, they're familiar with corporate structure, right? So when you, you understand there are different types of corporations and different type of corporations have different functions, right? If you're a single uh, member, you may have an LLC, right? A single member LLC, or you may have an S corp. Um, if you start to grow and you wanna raise capital, you may be a C corp. So just like there's many types of corporations, a cause center, right, cause, and I know some, did you say call center? Did you say, what is it? Mm -hmm. Cause, cause center is the social impact arm of a for-profit organization. So those of you that are social impact leaders, those of you that are big on diversity and inclusion, and in every single region, if you don't have a cause center, you probably should have one. And there's some benefits, and I'll go into that. It's you, anywhere from two to 300K to your bottom line once you understand how to package this concept. It's nothing that's new. It's something that's been around for a while. I attribute it to the, the same concept as when water, water started to be bottled, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's been there all the time, it's just packaged. And then yeah. it becomes the number one beverage. Same thing with here. So a cost center is a, and I'll give you the nuts and bolts. Essentially, it is the social impact arm. It's a valid 501c3 that is a social impact arm of a for-profit organization. Makes sense, makes sense. So before we jump into your presentation, can you tell us more about how Resilia has impacted your work with cost centers? Um, and even tell us more about a cost center who has gone through the Resilient formation process. Absolutely. So uh, first and foremost, I have learned when it comes to partnerships that, and especially in tech, because it, it, it took years for us to just build our own platform. And when we started, we were just a database, and then we started adding features and doing things. And when we said our customers came to us, and in the evolution of our own technology, people said, hey, can you write grants? And I said, yeah, right? <laughs> so I went to all kinds of different grant writing associations, put them all on retainer. Now we have what's called like Uber for, it's grant source, it's like Uber for grants on demand, 2,500 consultants across the US, Canada, and Mexico. And then we had people that said, well, to put us in a better position for grants, we'd love to start a nonprofit. And they said, can you do that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I went through the process of doing a nonprofit. And yes, you can do the paperwork. But once you're trying to scale, it's easier just to find somebody that that's what they do. That's their bread and butter. They have the compliance. And um, just by and on our journey, we've been people have been put in our path. And that's when I met, I think it was Julie back in 2018. And she's like, look, if you guys are doing grants, you have to, you have to, have to, have to meet, meet Brazilian. I was in a booth presenting. Um, I think it was at a collision conference. And they said, you have to meet what was called exempt me now back then. Um, you have to meet these people. And we ended up meeting and I said, look, we're not there now, but it, we're going to be doing this over the next six months. And uh, I ended up meeting Savitra a couple months later when I was back in New Orleans. Um, but all the compliance, all the back end, just to make sure everything's done and it's not bubble gum and duct tape. I want to make sure it's important to me that our clients get set up correctly. And yes, we could do it and try to file, but there's some follow up that needs to happen. And there's Resilia helps us with every step, every single cause center that we do. Resilia helps us not only set it up, they make sure the nonprofit, the, the precursor work is done, right? The nonprofit set up from the get go. If the mission is kind of, they'll help us massage that, right? To get the best value for our clients. They'll make sure that the 501c3 goes through. If there's any hiccups throughout that process, which is important, because if you do it wrong, right? You'll be sitting on the bench for six months. So that's, you don't want that, especially when we're, you're looking down the road and you want grants, some, you need that 501c3. So helping us do that and then just making sure, even when you get the 501c3, the, the work's not done, right? right? You still, there's still some compliance and some things you have to file your 990s and getting those uh, reminders is making sure, because right, we have 700 clients, like trying to make sure that all those clients are 
being followed up on, it's, it's important. So uh, we're eternally grateful for the, for the Resilia partnership and helping us uh, reach our goals because there's no way we'd be able to, our team to focus that and really get to the next level. Awesome, thank you, Alan. Um, so let's jump into your presentation. Okay. A quick message to our audience, be sure to write down all the questions that you have um, because we're gonna head straight into Q&A after Alan wraps up his presentation. All right, so I like to keep these presentations interactive. So there's people looking at the chat right now. I'm gonna make sure y'all don't fall asleep on me. Type in the chat if you know what a cause center is. Type it in the chat right now. There'll be a few people that type it in. Some of y'all are asleep, but by the time you leave here, you'll know what it is, what it does, and you can use it for yourself. So let me... We got a couple I, I understand. We have a couple of I don't understand. So we may okay. have to go into a little bit more detail during the presentation. Okay. Let's go. So we have Tamira and Caitlin saying, I don't understand. Sarah, we're going to follow up with you at the end of this presentation to make sure that you know. <laughs> All right. Sarah and Caitlin, we're going we're gonna to make sure, right? I got your names. I'm putting you on the list. I'm going to ask you again if you, Sarah, I got you, Caitlin. All right, so this is just a, a picture just to show you uh, the, the, the organization that started this all. And usually people that start organizations that I met this, uh, we see a lot of people in Chicago, right? Grubhub started because a guy couldn't get his food fast enough and he got angry enough about the problem that he started to develop a solution. And that's where um, we came in, right? We started to develop the solution now. Alej, you talked about money for your mission, and I'm gonna drop something else on you guys. Not only is that like a tagline, it's also our book series. And we have been writing over the last year, a bunch of books. We actually are releasing 54 different books at the end of this week that break down a cost center for over 54 different industries by, January, mid-January, we will have over 270 books that break it down in different, five different areas, causes, industries, skills, equity, right? Equity, and then um, concepts, right? Different concepts, and we call it, we break it down into concepts slash techniques, because it's a concept if you don't know how to use it, it's a technique if it's something that you have in your bag if that makes sense. So look out for that. Um, by the end of this, I'm going to drop a link on everybody that you'll be able to keep up with all the recent developments that we have. So, and I'll, I'll just give you this, and Brasilia has helped us out tremendously. So you're going to get, we're creating a minority equity program. And I'm just, I like to give people dessert first. It's not like, hey, let's get to the end of the presentation and then you know. Right, I'll, I'll tell you where we're getting to and then I'll give you the details in between. So compensation for a minority equity program, just so you know, this is not a concept for us, it's a technique. Not only do we have one cost center, but we have 54 across the US, Canada, and Mexico. Here are the benefits and then I'm gonna get into the nuts and bolts. And if there's any questions all between, I want you to jump in and type that in the chat. So for those of you that are diversity and inclusion officers, right? For those of you that are looking to build equity, there is just like every Fortune 500 company, every major sports team, they have they understand the benefits of a cause center. Now, I'm gonna go into a few examples. They've called it a foundation in the past, right? But essentially, it has it does some of the same benefits. We have just packaged it in a way that's even more beneficial. So you get a $50,000 a $50, tax write-off. I'm gonna give you an example and show you the money, right? Uh, you can get $120,000 in marketing grants. You can increase sales by 30 grand within 60 to 90 days. And that may be uh, directly pro through your for-profit, but indirectly because the cost center is a totally separate entity, right? You can utilize green money incentives, um, you'll now be eligible. So most of, most people understand that 
most of the grants out there, it's about an 80-20 and then it's 80-20 flip. 80% 80, 80 of the grants out there on a, from a sure volume are probably for nonprofits. Now, when it comes to the actual funding, 80% of the, the, the money out there will come from very large grants that may be for for-profits, but you want to be able to take advantage of both. And if you have a call center, you will be able to do that. So that's to, just to give you a little bit of dessert up front. So we've helped a lot. So we've worked with professional athletes, as you know, diversity and inclusion officers. If you have athletes that either sponsor you or you work with them or you're doing dope, you can help them save money on the money that they're already going to lose anyway and partner with you. And we can show you how to do that. We also help them um, work on pr programs that they would do anyway, right? But instead of doing out of pocket, they put it in what's called a cause center and they're able to build their overall brand, right? We've done it with churches. Um, we can do it with commercial real estate pro uh, programs and apartment complexes. I'm a real estate investor myself. I started in single family and I started buying apartment complexes um a couple years ago sold my single family homes but for those of you that are buying commercial buildings right not only can we help you with the cause center and i'm going to show you what we're doing in 270 communities around the u.s canada and mexico you can also in opportunity zones get money for the properties that you are working on we can also help you get green money incentives water electricity gas all within a cause center and there's money that is already allocated for you to do that you just have to find out where it is and if you work with us we'll do it for you uh bike drives healthcare is our number one um veterans so just to tell you i mean we we have over 700 clients and strategic partners all over large and small so this is not our first rodeo so usually what we find is, uh, and this happens a lot of times, there's three things that people struggle with, even with the conceptualization of, of what they want to do. It's time, tools, and talent. And a lot of you diversity and equity and inclusion officers, there's a lot of things that you want to implement, but there's a lack of time to do it, right? Time is our most valuable resource, even more valuable than money. We can always, make more money, but time is limited. It's a finite resource. So we want to make sure that we are maximizing our time. And that's why we work with personally. That's why we work with Resilia, because we can double our time by helping by using Resilia to do the legwork on the uh, formation, because that's what they do. And they do it better than anybody else in the game. So also tools, right? You may not have the tools to actually put all of this together when it comes to esg environmental social governance many of you diversity and inclusion officers uh have heard that term uh you have you're in big board meetings you're around the table talking about what is our solution what's our strategy how are we going to roll this out but you lack the tools to do it internally uh we did a big webinar and kpmg is one of our strategic partners and and investors that help us roll this out and do the compliance and do all the paperwork already right talent you may not have the esg consultants on staff you are a diversity and inclusion officer um you're you're thinking about how to bring equity to the minority community but you're thinking okay where do i get these people you may not have the in-house talent to accomplish all of that so that's where we come in um so we have a digital platform um the good thing is uh, we help you with every step of the way to find money for your mission. And it's extended outside of just grants, right? Because we, we can help you find, write, track, and manage grants all in one system, right? We can get you going from everything, right? Also, government contracts, green money, incentives, and package it in a way to where you get the most value out of what you want to do. When it comes to full service, we have all the consultants. So we have 2,500 consultants across the US, Canada, and Mexico to fully implement the strategy 
and it's all in one subscription. And the biggest thing and why uh, that article that Forbes wrote uh, about us is our investment protection. So there's been little to no innovation in this industry in the last 40 years. And what we've had an opportunity to do is get investment protection, meaning if you do not at least get your investment back within the first 12 months, we will continue to write grants, do fundraising, go contract at no additional cost, or we will give you a cash credit for the difference. So it's it's risk free to you guys, especially with ESG. It's like, hey, we want to try some consultants, but if it doesn't work, I mean, we have budget, right? All those questions that you ask uh, yourself in your head, you no longer have to worry about. So let's get into, we have a, I just want to get down into this and then we can, if we have time, we'll talk about, uh, dig down in a little deeper on what we can do for the actual program. But I want to get to this. So a cost center, here's a couple di different industries that we've done this in. Obviously, healthcare is number one for us. Um, commercial real estate, tech companies, education, churches, professional services. Um, but to give you the definition again, and I want everybody, this is one of the, this is the bus stop, right? Y'all need to get on the bus right here. What is a cost center? Sarah, this is for you. Caitlin, this is for you, right? A cause center is a type of a nonprofit that is a federally registered 501c3. The cause center serves as the social impact arm, but is completely separate from the for-profit. Now I'm gonna, this is a bus stop. I need y'all to get on the bus. So everybody, and life is open book, I want you to type in the chat right now, what is a cause center, right? And I, I'm gonna give you the answer to the test, it's on the screen, <laughs> right? And I'm gonna get, what is a cause center? And one question, Alan, that maybe we can answer right here. Um, Mark said, so is it the same thing as a foundation? Yeah, so great question. No, so a foundation may, may have a certain initiative, um, a cause center, is the social impact arm of a for-profit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you exactly what that means because many people are like, hey, I'm a for-profit and I, I wanna do some social impact type activities, but at the end of the day, I do want to make money. Is there a way to legally, keyword, legally, just like when I was a kid, right? Seeing all this money being made, how do I legally make money, right? And this is how, and that's why you want a cause center versus just a, uh, a regular foundation. So here's, here's how, right? A cause center, and I'm gonna flash to this again, the benefits, and then we're gonna, we're gonna dig down into some of the details here. Um, and I'm gonna actually show you one of ours and give you a concrete example of how this works uh, with one of ours, and I'll show you the actual money. Um, so a cause center, here's the benefits. Now, there's a bunch of things that you have to do to actually make this work. In a foundation, usually people will start a foundation. And number one, great question, I think that was Mark. Um, in a foundation, they may go after and do some social impact thing, right? Whether it's scholarships, whether it's feed the homeless. And that is the only benefit to that foundation that in number one of the of the fixed fifty thousand dollar tax credit most of the foundations out there honestly you have to follow the money most of the nonprofit activity people do that right not only because they want to do things out of the goodness of their heart but there's a huge reason behind that and that's the 501c3 designation there's a tax write-off for it that's why there's hundreds of millions and billions that are put into foundations for that. Now, we have found a way to get exactly what each one of you want, right, in the back of your head, right? How do I still resonate and do things and increase the value of my brand and make more sales and do some of the things that I would do anyway, but get a discount on it and, and also impact the community like I want to in the right structure? And that would, that's what a cause center is. And I know what a few of are you saying, ah, is this legal? I, I, I don't know. Well, let me show you. If you know, and you can pick a sport, 
every major sports team, the Rockets, right? The Lakers, I'm actually a Lakers fan. Shout out Lakers, got it done. <laughs> um, any MLB sports team, any NFL, and I'm talking a little slow because I want you guys to really let this resonate, let it sit and marinate. This is already happening today. Every major sports team, every Fortune 500 company, they have already figured this out. They're doing it right now. It's happening in, in plain sight. It's hidden in plain sight. So I'll give you an example, Rockets, right? Lakers, this is actually Anthony Davis and shout out he, he when he was with y'all in New Orleans. So they will do these community cares events, right? They'll do a lot of great things in the community. And when they do these great things in the community, what do people say? Oh, it's great that the basketball players out, are out there doing great things in the community and in their heart and their mind and their soul, they're saying, I feel better about this particular brand, this thing. And it makes me want to spend more money with them, right? There's every Fortune 500 company has certain departments where they spend millions and millions and millions of dollars on their brand to increase what's called goodwill. And social impact is a big part of that. And most of you have on this call have been in those rooms where you talk about that. Well, here's a way to package it, right? Every KW Cares, they're, they're here in, in Texas. They do a bunch of great things, hurricane relief, all in the country. So instead of marketing and saying, hey, I'm this for-profit, go buy my stuff. They say, hey, this is, and, and granted, they want to do some good things in the community, but it's a lot easier to do market education and brand education in doing good things in the community when it's money you're going to lose anyway because of taxes and you can do some great things in the community and you can get grants and dollars toward your mission if you have the right structure another one and we'll get off this right fortune 500 companies right well they do that they write off millions of dollars every single year right and at the end of the day they are still doing some branding and people these people hey we we went to go help these people they went to uh, we did these homeless drives. People drive by and say, hey, they're doing some great things. I love what you guys are doing uh, for the homeless. Let me donate. Let me give you a certain grant from my own company to further what you're doing. Now, if you're a for-profit, that's not going to happen, right? It's, hey, buy my stuff. If you're a nonprofit, and in this case, a cause center, if you look all over this, their branding is all across it right you know that is walmart even though that is walmart's foundation y'all with me type in the chat if you're with me right we're going to get everybody on the bus before we end here type it in the chat now there's a concept called the the great wealth transfer and for those of you that don't know what it is you can google it after so the great wealth transfer is the greatest tenure opportunity that we have seen in this country financial gurus are all talking about this. Now, what you really need to understand is the millennial mindset. So the great wealth transfer is the 10 year opportunity that's happening between 2020 and 2030, right? So there will be by 2030, millennials are expected to inherit over $68 trillion, trillion from the baby boomers. Now, the baby boomers, and I'm gonna show you how this all ties together. The baby boomers are retiring at a rate of over 10,000 every single day. Now, why that's important is the baby boomers, their mindset is different, right? When it comes to millennial, and I'm a millennial, right? 70% of millennials, will buy or spend more money on something with a cause that they care about right so this is why a cause center is so important and social impact is the new website all of you diversity and inclusion officers know that on here you've been in those rooms in the 90s if you didn't have a website people those who said ah eh, you know i've been doing business for years and i don't really need a website those businesses are gone, right? They're gone. They fell by the wayside, right? In, in the early 2000s, tech, if you didn't have a, a, a website, all of that, went, this is the new website. If you aren't doing something 
with your brand and showing how you're resonating and doing things in the community, you will be left behind because a millennial will even pay more money to another brand that resonates, right? That are, is doing good things in the community, even though they have to pay more. And if you don't believe me, type in the chat if you believe me. <laughs> type in the chat if you've seen this, because I'm going to show you another example, right? And if you don't believe me, I'm going to give you concrete examples. We're going to get everybody on the bus by the end of this webinar. Yeah, it's true. Abdul said adapt or die, and that's so true. Right? You have to. You have to. So here, let me give you an example. Millennials, and keep in mind, so if y'all see on the back, right, y'all see, well, you'll see when I share my screen. I have a little, you see pictures of my baby girl. I have a five-year-old daughter, right? And I have a mom that's a baby boomer. So as my mother gets older and she goes into retirement, right? Won't happen because my mom is a sleep when you die person. She's still hustling. Um, but my daughter, I control the buying decision, right? Getting my mom here, buying a house for her. My little girl, as I get her and bring her up and pick what private school she wants to go to. As the millennial, I'm controlling the buying decisions and I'm spending the money for both generations. So if there's something that resonates with a cause that I care about, I'm probably going to spend my money with whatever that is, whether it's a little trinket, whether it's food, whether it's a, a new backpack, and I'm gonna show you a few examples, that's very important. So millennials view things as either helping the community or taking away from the community. And you want your brand to be in the millennial mindset. And this is all, these are all studies that have been done. I didn't come up with these, right? You can Google all these after. Um, they need to, you need to have your brand as being viewed as helping the community. And the only way to do that, you may be doing some great things, but if people don't know about it, it's like, that's why social media is so important. People say, hey, well, you know, I, I just went to Thailand. Well, was it on, the, was it on social media? Because if it, if it wasn't, it didn't happen. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so you want to know what that is. So I'll give you a few concrete examples and then I'm going to show you um, some money on my screen. So these are two, this is not even one of your brands. This is an everyday example. When I go to the store, the grocery store, my, my baby girl says, daddy, daddy, I want some breakfast. I go and buy some eggs. Now, when I open that refrigerator door, I have two choices. I can buy the regular eggs and they're $1.99, or I can buy the cage-free eggs where they treat the animals a little bit better and they're almost twice as expensive. Which ones do you think I buy? I'm going to buy the cage free, right? Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's right, they treat the animals a little bit better. That resonates in, with things with me. And that happens in tech. That happens with things you buy, things you eat, products you buy. When I was in, when I was in middle school, right, I wanted a, this nice leather backpack. Now, back then, right, when I was in middle school, early, two, early 2000s, late 90s, I want that backpack there was a cheaper version called a pleather backpack. That same pleather backpack today is rebranded with a cause called a vegan backpack. And that same backpack is three times as expensive, right? So you think about your brand, your product, your service. Once you attach the cause, and this is how cause centers attach to everything. And I'm gonna show you an example on ours. But I want you to example the, you have to understand the macro, right? The high level, what the mindset is, how our world is changing. And then you have to understand with your products and service, the micro. And here's the cost center and how does it work for your business, right? And that's what I want you to work, um, walk away with. Type in the chat if you're getting what a cost center is. If you've seen this in the marketplace, if you're with me. And if you're not, let me know because we'll, we'll dig down a, a little deeper and we're going forth. So here's how a cost center works for your business, right? You want to create a cost center, and that's what we do so eloquently with uh, Resilia, right? Make sure everything is streamlined, it's done properly, and if it's not, we will do it again until it's done correctly. We will create and help you run a program. 
Now, a lot of you diversity, equity, inclusion officers on the line today are thinking of how you can put together a program. We will do that for you. You want to maintain compliance and to be a compliant cost center, you cannot funnel money like from the nonprofit to the for-profit, but there is a way that you can benefit. So you have to maintain compliance. So we do everything on the back end, make sure that everything is filed. We would, with our um, strategic partners, we'll do all your bookkeeping, all the taxes with KPMG. And then you wanna create impact reports so people know what you're doing. And as you saw on the previous line, you are you understand that you are above the line and will create an impact for, for you. And doing all of that will help you get money for your mission. Now you have an impact report and those people driving by will now either give you donations, right? And I'm gonna show you that, or they will give you grants, but you have to write the proposals, right? And that's where we come in, we'll do all that for you. So if you wanted to do this by yourself, and I'm gonna run through this list really quick, type in the chat if this slide makes you dizzy, right? Because these are all the different things that you have to do to effectively run this, right? You're gonna have to file the, the mission. You're gonna have to come up with the framework and how you're gonna put all the together, do the bylaws, conflict of interest statement, whistleblower policy, code of ethics, file a nonprofit in your state, do an EIN 501c3, while you're doing that, you probably want a memorandum, separate bank account, because you have to do compliance, have a documented plan. What well, I'm not even gonna go through all this because you're already tired and I haven't got through the whole list. So we do all of this for you, right? All clear, concise, in one package, will help you get money for your mission, will unlock about 300K to your bottom line, will help you do some great things in the community, and will help you get the money that you deserve for your cause. And I'm gonna show you. So uh, with Resilia, KPMG Spark and Grant Source in one package, we're able to do all the paperwork filing, the bookkeeping, the research, the implementation, the taxes, the compliance, and help you get money for your mission, get your variety of government grants, um, foundation grants, corporation grants from some of those same various organizations, Keep in mind, a lot of those large Fortune 500 companies, and some of you are on today, they have to give a certain amount of money every single year. Now, also in our platform, and I'll touch on this briefly, and we'll open up to the Q&A. Also on that, you want to know, we also help those people that want to give Right. And we have a whole diversity inclusion package because there's so many people raising their hands saying, I want to help with diversity and, and minority equity. Well, be careful what you wish for, because we have it all in one package. Um, so that's that. Let me give you a quick uh, example. And then we are going to jump into Q&A. Type in the chat if you all are with me. So I'm going to share my screen here. Let me know if you can see this full screen. Can you all see my screen? Awesome, yeah, we can see it. Okay, so just to, so everybody leaves here and they conceptualize how this actually works. This is our for-profit website, right? So we're a mobile web-based platform that helps people get money for their mission. Y'all get what we do. So in this, our call to action, right, is to book a demo. So somebody goes and they book a demo, they put in their funding assessment, we see, if and how we can help them and they go into our CRM and we would follow up, with them, right? So that's on our for-profit side. Now, on our nonprofit side, our cause center, and this is one of them, remember we have 54 of them, we have Grant Source Foundation. Now, before, before I had Grant Source Foundation, I was doing things in the community, right? And But I was doing them out of my own pocket. If you remember at the beginning of this webinar, I told you about uh, where I grew up and some of those, I didn't grow up with a whole lot of money, right? By no means do I want you to subscribe to see that I was like Robin to eat. I just didn't grow up with a lot of money and that I didn't have financial education when I was growing up. So I was doing financial education to, to some kids, right? Just out of, out of the something that I wanted to do. Now, that same thing that I was just doing is packaged in a program in my cost center. 
Um, I was doing things, like I said, there was that big shooting, remember in El Paso? I was going to send them money and, and help them raise money just out of, the, out of the goodness of my heart. I knew this pastor and I knew his daughter that got, unfortunately, that got shot. But now that I have a cause center, right, we were able to help him raise some money. in our cause center. So the same things that you're already doing, think of bottled water, we're just packaging it, right? We're just packaging it. So going back onto how this helps you, because one of the things you're going to say, if you have a cause center, you're gonna be able to package this in a way that you get a $50,000 tax write-off. Now getting on how you indirectly make money, right? indirectly because they are two separate entities, two separate websites in our nonprofit. So there's three things that you need to do as a for-profit organization, right? And everybody knows this as a startup, if you're getting started and you're trying to enter the market, you got have to do three things. Number one is you have to educate the market on what you're doing, right? And why there is a huge problem that you are, as a founder, angry enough to be able to want to move and create a solution. So you have to do market education, right? You have to do differentiation education, let people know how it's different than what has been going on in the status quo. And then you have to do product education. Now, if you do all of that in a for-profit, it's gonna cost you money. People are gonna say, hey, well, you know, you can sponsor this event, you can, you know, go to your luncheon, you can, you know, put your name on a billboard lunch. All of that stuff is expensive. If you do it in a nonprofit, in your cause center, remember you're doing great things for the community, but now you can actually charge people to give them your market education. So that's what we do. So if people wanna learn about grants and the big problem and how to actually go out and find grants, we have curriculum for that, education, right? And it's good, it's two day classes, it's good curriculum. Now, if they want to actually buy a full service SaaS platform that does everything for them, they buy our, from our for-profit, right? It, it happens, this is totally compliant. And this is something that Fortune 500 companies have figured out way before we did. We're just bringing it down to the small business owner, right? So they're able to do that. Let me show you something else. And I'm gonna show you how, I'm gonna show you how we get $120,000 for each cost center. This time Q1, we'll be spending $500,000 a month that we get from grants, right? Do y'all hear that? $500,000 a month that we're going to be getting for grants. So here's, here's a program, if y'all remember, and if I'm going too fast, just type in the chat, the same call to action that we had on our for-profit website, right? We have on our nonprofit website. So if they want to learn about a few programs and everything else, now a few people that come in here, not only do they want to learn about programs, they also want somebody full service to do everything and help them find, write, track, manage, or even give grants. So that goes in, it's totally separate, it's compliant, but we still get the lead and the lead, right? If they want education, that's fine and that stays in our for-profit. But if they want to buy our SaaS based platform, right, and, and do everything full service, that is a for profit um, that goes from our for profit. Type in the chat if that's starting to make more sense, right? Type it in the chat. I'll show you another thing. Um, so, how that adds up to 300K, and I'll go back to that slide and we'll end on that, do some QA. $50,000 tax write off, 120K in marketing grant, and this is for each cost center. 120k in marketing grants, 30k in increased sales. As you saw, how I increased sales by having a 501c3, you unlock foundation grants, you unlock corporation grants, you unlock celebrity grants, and those are anywhere from 20 to 40k each, right? To solve whatever the big problem is that you were initially doing out of pocket. So let me show you this, and I know we're uh, we're running out. Uh, of time, let's see, I'm running out of time. Why I pull this up, any questions? I'm hearing dead, dead silence. This must be good. 
Let's this see. must be good or y'all are asleep on me, one or the other. One question that Alma asked is, does grant source also assist with filing taxes for 501c3? Correct. We do everything full service, everything you need. All in one package. So let me give you an, let me give you an example, right? Full implementation. What I didn't want to do is there was so many, when I got into this industry, there was so many people, there was a loop. I said, hey, um, where can I find grants? And somebody said, go to the library. And then I said, okay, uh, I'm at the library. And I asked the library, where can I find grants? And they said, go to the SBA. And I said, okay, I went to the SBA. The SBA said, we'll go to the city. And you know what the city told me? Go back to the library. <laughs> Y'all like, kidding? You guys are just clowning me. So, and, and then same thing with taxes. Like who can file a, a, a nine dot, a what? Like, so I didn't want any of that. Everything that we do is full service, yeah. soup to nuts. We do it all in one package. And under the covers, there may be some, like the taxes and everything compliance that's done by KPMG. We helped you do the cost center that's done by, but it's all one package with Grant Source. We just have strategic partners that were able to do things in, in one simple to use pa package. So let me show you guys this. Um, so we get anywhere, we get about $10,000. Let me show you this, right? Y'all see the money over here. It's about $10,000 every single month that we get for grants. And we do this as well. We will get you this marketing grant, as you see, Grant Source Foundation. I'll show you the numbers on this. Each month, we get anywhere from 45 to 60,000 views. From those views, we get about 4,800 clicks. From those clicks, we get about two to 300 leads per cause center. And keep in mind, this is coming from our foundation, and we're able to convert those leads into uh, customers, into new customers, right? Um, now, this is the same thing with you. We've done this with doctors, right? Doctors educate people on their big problem, especially during COVID. That's number one. We do that all over the country. They educate people on um, where they can do outreach for COVID, what the big problem with COVID is. And then at the end of the day, they are selling them the service to go get their either COVID tests, right? Um, and we have done it with service surgery centers, private practices, uh, doctor's offices. We've done it with commercial real estate, right? Commercial real estate. And that's where I'm writing all of these books. 54 will drop by the end of this week. So um, to show you how it works for your exact industry and break down even the income and financial model uh, with and without having a cost center. So each one of these, and we build all of the ads, no matter what your industry is, we will build all of the ads we will give you analytics and you can access everything with one click in the in the platform, right? The brand awareness, we talked about market education, we talked about donations. Look, instead of me paying to host a lunch and learn, I have people that want to donate to me to further my education. They say, hey, this is a big problem. I love what you're doing. Here's a donation. That's a lot better than you paying for something and having no direct response, wouldn't you agree, right? Um, events, those of you that are on the other side and want to give and you want minority founders that you can invest in, right? That you can help with your ESG packages, that you want to go out and let them know instead of you spending your dollars, you can keep more of those dollars because you don't have to do all of that digital outreach and spend money on SEO and everything else. You can actually keep more of that money and actually give either to those nonprofit organizations and you can give to those founders that you want to invest in. And we do all the impact reports on the higher platform, the, the, the enterprise uh, resilient platform where we're able to manage the whole process. So you don't just blindly give, you know exactly where that money is going. And at the end of the day, we can create an impact report for you, blast that out so that your brand is seen as above the line by millennials. I'm done. I'm done. So that's what we got. Awesome. And so we can head straight into Q&A. Um, who just asked a question, can you guys help get grants for organizations whose operation is for a social cause, but not registered as a 501c3? You are perfect. I've been looking for you for six months. Yes. <laughs> yes. So not only can we help you 
um, start the 501c3 and, and package it. Um, and I'll show you the benefits because a lot of people, if they don't know exactly how they use it, like, hey, should I be a B Corp? We'll help you with the structure and then we will actually help you with the grants. The good thing is, and I'll show this, um, I'll, I'll drop the, it's gonna be GS Grant Toolkit, but we're gonna break down, and my financial analysts on our team are already breaking down this $870 billion plan that's happening by the next administration and how, especially if you're a minority, where and how to get that money. So if you're a social impact in organization, we can help you with all aspects of what you just talked about. Awesome, another question from Alma, for strategic planning purposes, how long should it take to set up a call center for a small business? Great question. So the good thing is, um, and, and Resilia helps us with that, that's why they, we partner with them. Um, from a strategic standpoint, to get your 501c3, it's going to take about 90 days, right? We'll set that up. The good thing is, once we file your nonprofit corporation, we can get you what's called a memorandum of 501c3, because I'm not big on waiting, right? You can still be able to raise money from foundations and donations, and we can still build all of the revenue model and help you build impact reports. Why you are in limbo with your 501c3, so you're still getting money for your mission during that duration. But to answer your big question, about 90 days. Awesome. And Zoe wants to know, and I'm sure everyone who's tuned in wants to know, how can we get in touch with you? Excellent. So you you can go to, and I want to make this very, let me type it in the chat. Um, www, you can't forget this, getmoneyforyourmission.com, right? That's our website. And I'm going to put a, everybody that's here today, we're going to follow up with a guide. So getmoneyforyourmission.com is the website. Here's where if you want direct information and you're interested in the call center right now, um, getmoneyforyourmission.com forward slash cause that center. Let me type in the chat. Get money for your mission.com. Keep them coming. Any anybody else? Yeah, and this is one more question. We might we may need um, more information to answer it. Just to clarify, if they don't want to be a five hundred one c three, can they still get grants? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a strategy. Getting doing a call center is a strategy that opens up more grants. But if you are just a tech company, if you're just a for profit, and you want to, depending on where you're at, if you're government, if you are in a diversity and inclusion officer and you just want grants to build out a property grants to build out your tech we do that as well awesome and also i want to encourage everyone um, to follow um alan and his organization on social media we definitely were able to follow you on instagram and get a lot of good information um and to follow the instagram page for resilia which is at resilia co the last question that I want to ask you, and wait, I think we have one more. I'm with MC. If we are all, if we are already a client, what more do we need to do on our end? If you're already a client, um, it just depends where you're at. We have a lot yeah. of different um, packages. Um, if you want to, I don't know where you're at. If you're, oh, Marissa, is that Marissa with Mass Challenge? Okay, I got you. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll, we'll have a follow up with uh, I think we have a follow up with Jason to talk about diversity and inclusion and some of the things we can do to um, measure the impact that you guys have in that community. So if you are already a grant source client, um, there's always more that we can do for you. We want to make sure that we can execute and you're getting the most value out of the, out of the platform based on your goals. So let's set up a follow up with your account manager and uh, they'll get me involved. Awesome. And this is the last question that I love to ask everyone. In 60 seconds, what are your departing words of wisdom? Departing words of wisdom. Focus on impact, right? It's not about the, it's not just about the money, it's about the impact. So if you can really get involved, remember what I said about being above the line. If you really focus on impact, we can find you the money. Right. There's so many people that just want the money and they're just money without no purpose. And we have a our, our slogan is purpose with profit. 
right? Focus on the impact that you want to do and we can find you whatever you want. And that's just, it's a life thing, right? Find your purpose or you waste an air, something that Nipsey Hussle would say. Yeah. Very wise. Find what you really, what you really, 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 really want to do. Follow that. And that's what these 270 books are about. I know that's a little bit more than 60 seconds, but just real quick. When I was in high school, when I was at my college graduation, at, when I was at a diamond club in the Bahamas at the conference, right? Every major achievement people have, there's a commencement speaker that says, hey, don't worry about the money, just follow your purpose. And that is an empty statement because a lot of people don't know how to follow the purpose and make money with it until now. Follow us, we'll help you. Awesome, well, thank you so much, Alan. This has been as amazing as I thought it would be. Uh, the wealth of information that you have provided has been unmatched. So thank you, everyone. Please take advantage of going to that website and getting in contact with Alan. He's so easy to talk to, willing to answer all of your questions. Um, and come back for the next Resilia Office Hours. Y'all have a blessed day. Thank you for no having problem. us. Thank you, Alan. All right. Y'all have a blessed day.